American jurist Joseph Bradley once said, and I quote, Society cannot exist without law. Law is the bond of society, that which makes it, that which preserves it and keeps it together. It's in fact the essence of civil society. You're watching NAPTIP on the move. I'm Angela Agwegi. Thank you for joining us. Indeed, laws play a crucial role in preventing anarchy in any society. Today on NAPTIP on the Move, the Legal and Prosecution Department is our focus. What are the penalties for offenders? Well, you'll get to learn more if you stay with NAPTIP on the Move. One of the 12 departments of NAPTIP the Legal and Prosecution Department is responsible for prosecution of offenders. The role of the Legal Department of the agency uh, as enshrined in Section 11.1, Subsection 2 of the Trafficking in Persons Act uh, provide that the Legal Department should be in charge of all prosecution. That's number one. Number two, we are also responsible for defending the agency in civil suits. Number three, we are also responsible for preparing and vetting of MOUs. We also attend meetings. We also issue clearance as envisaged by Regulation 2019, like those who want to travel outside for the purpose of educational excursion, sporting activities, labor recruitment, and what have you. So these are the main functions of the legal and prosecution department. The department also has the powers to confiscate assets. We are a multidisciplinary and crime-fighting law enforcement agencies. Well, by the provision of Section 6 of our Act will have the powers to investigate, to seize, to arrest, to enter into premises, vessel, or any building for the purpose of searching or for the purpose of arresting a person whom we reasonably suspected to have committed any offense under the Act. So the powers are very wide. And once a person is arrested and is arraigned before the court, then we commence the process of confiscating that asset. First of all, we apply for an interim order of forfeiture. Then after the interim order of forfeiture, when we have the conviction, or rather when we secure the conviction, then we apply for the final order of uh, forfeiture. So that is how we do it. Interim order first, then the final order of forfeiture last. We do confiscate, we do apply for the order of the court to confiscate. Memorandum of understanding are prepared by the Legal and Prosecution Department. We draft MOU with our partners, with relevant uh, security agencies who have various MOUs that stipulate the roles and function and responsibility of each party. So these are the kind of MOUs that we draft. 
it can be bilateral, it can be multilateral, it can also be a tripartite agreement. Okay, late last year, uh, we had MOU with our neighboring country, Niger. We also had MOU with uh, Burkina Faso. We have one with uh, Senegal and uh, a lot of African countries. It is part of the collaboration which we are supposed to adopt in fighting the scourge of uh, human trafficking. So far, the department has secured several convictions for the agency. Well, uh, since inception uh, to date, we have 490 convictions of trafficking cases, DIP cases, and we have eight convictions of violence against the Person Act conviction. We are working very hard and we are working towards doubling or even tripling conviction this year. And we are also working towards having uh, high profile cases because that is the mission of our new DG. Some of the penalties for offenders are? We have various penalties ranging from seven years imprisonment to six months imprisonment as well as option of fine. So there are a lot of penalties contained in the Trafficking in Person and Prohibition Act prescribing various penalties for those that run foul of the law. If you organize a foreign travel for the purpose of prostitution, then you run foul of the law. And once you are taken to court, at the end of the day you might be uh, sentenced to imprisonment, to a term of imprisonment. Also, if you employ a boy, I mean, or a child under 12 years old, that is another offense. You can you risk going to jail for two years. Similarly, if you procure a person for the purpose of sexual exploitation, it is also an offense. Likewise, if you procure the entry of a person into another country in which he is not a citizen, that one is also a An penalty offense. and you risk going to jail. So there are many penalties as far as the, 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 the TIP is concerned. As for the BAP, you know, the Violence Against Persons Act pro provides uh, protection against all forms of violence against persons in public and in private. It also provides penalties and maximum protection for the victims. So like, for example, rape. When somebody commits rape, the punishment for rape ranges from 12 years imprisonment without option of fine for life imprisonment. And also, the victim will also be compensated. So you see, that is the highest punishment in BAP. And we also have the lesser punishment, which is uh, uh, intimidation. When you intimidate a person, you risk going to jail for six months. So these are the kind of offenses that are contained in the BAP Act. There are many of them, like incest, like political violence, like spousal battery, and, and many other offenses in, in, as contained in the, in, in, in the Violence Against uh, Person Act. There, there are no less than 20 penal provision in the Violence Against Person Act. Prosecution of offenders has its challenges. Uh, no matter the level of one's commitment, passion for the job, zeal for the job, if you don't have the funds, that's the way with them, you can hardly achieve your target. So logistic inadequacy of funds, lack of witnesses, and sometimes unwillingness of the witnesses to come to court and testify is also part of the challenges we are facing, and then delay in the prosecution of cases. And this delay could be attributable to many factors. It could be the court itself, it could be the defense counsel, and it could be a natural delay. So there are many things that contribute to the delay in the dispensation of justice. And these are some of the challenges that we are facing as far as the prosecution of cases in concern. 
The department organizes seminars for judges to keep abreast with emerging trends in human trafficking and also collaborates with many organizations. All the activities of NAPTIP revolves around what we call the five P's. Policy, prevention, protection, prosecution and partnership. So we, partners with, we partner with people, we collaborate with people. And most of our partners, uh, there are law enforcement agencies, international organizations like IOM, like UNODC, like PIAP, like uh, Expertise France, like ICNPD. They are all our partners and we coll collaborate with them. It's a kind of synergy. It's part of the five key strategies that we adopt and use in fighting uh, the scourge of human trafficking. Reporting cases of human trafficking and violence against persons will enable more convictions. We just want to employ or urge the public to ensure that they report any case or cases of trafficking because it is only when they report that is why we'll be able to swing into action we have toll free line the toll free line is 627 once you dial that 627 is 247 we have people in the call center they will pick the call they will listen to your complaint then they will send your complaint to the appropriate department, which is investigation department. Then investigation will commence. After investigation, then they forward the case to legal and prosecution for advice. Once we find out that there is a prima facie case, then we file the case in court. So I urge the public to use that 627 so that they can reach us and lodge any complaint they have. And we ensure that the case is prosecuted diligently. The Legal and Prosecution Department of NAPTIP is ever willing to swing into action to secure justice for victims and ensure that all offenders are zealously prosecuted and convicted. Have you been promised a job here in Nigeria or abroad? What about offers of free education or enrollment in a foreign football club? Please do your research. These are some of the antics of human traffickers. Human trafficking is modern-day slavery. It entails forced labor, sex trafficking, and organ harvesting. Its consequences have devastating psychological effects such as depression, anxiety, memory loss, severe forms of mental trauma, and death. NAPTIP is working tirelessly to ensure protection of victims and speedy prosecution of offenders. Are you a victim? Waste no time. Call NAPTIP now on 0703. 000 203 or the toll free short code 627. NAPTIP, ensuring a human trafficking and violence free nation. Justice is a social need and a right for everyone. NAPTIP events will be on shortly. The National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, under the leadership of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs in partnership with the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Program, ROLAC, hosted some key stakeholders and partners at the public presentation of the VAP Annual Report. NAPTIP's annual report for the implementation of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act in Nigeria. The Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn. Representative of the Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Heads and Representatives of Agencies, Members of the High-Level Multi-Agency Task Team, HIMAT, Members of Service Provider Accountability Resource Control, SPARC, Civil Society Organizations, Members of the Press were in attendance. In her opening address, the Director General of the agency, Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi, assured that NAPTIP would continue to put its best foot forward by providing a 24-hour all-hands-on-deck approach and enhancing a rapid response division reporting directly to her office. She commended the Minister of Women Affairs for her relentless efforts in pushing for the adoption of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. 24 states are said to have adopted the VAP Act. 
She also expressed gratitude to all the stakeholders for their support. Goodwill messages were delivered by the representatives of European Union Ambassador, British Council, Inspector General of Police, National Security and Civil Defence Corps, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Nigerian Correctional Service, and Executive Secretary Human Rights Commission. Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, commended NAPTIP for the efforts made so far. The speaker of the event, Amina Salihu, Senior Programs Officer, MacArthur Foundation, who designed the National Sexual Offender Database, curated structure for HIMAT, and also facilitated the implementation of the VAP Act, reiterated the importance of gathering data, solidarity, and resilience. She used the medium to also acknowledge the other persons directly involved in the realization of the act. The climax of the event was the unveiling of the VAP Act report by dignitaries. The public presentation of the VAP Annual Report, an initiative of the Director General of NAPTIP, is the first of its kind since the enactment of the VAP Act in 2015. The Joint Border Task Force mentor, Dean Goddard, paid a courtesy visit to the Director General of NAPTIP, Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi. Dean Goddard said the purpose of the visit was to strengthen collaboration with NAPTIP. Dr. Waziri Azi welcomed him and emphasized the need to deepen the agency's partnership with the UK mentors and the Joint Border Task Force on the eradication of trafficking in persons. Action Against Trafficking in Persons and Smuggling of Migrants, A. Tipsum, in collaboration with the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, organized a training workshop to build capacity for members of the press on reporting issues of human trafficking. The training was tagged, Support to Mass Media on Awareness Campaign Against Trafficking in Persons and Smuggling of Migrants, a three-day training and capacity development orientation on standard reporting template for members of the Trafficking in Persons Media Corps, Officers of the Press and Public Relations Unit in Kefi, Nasarawa State. In her speech, the NAPTIP Director General, Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi, highlighted that though NAPTIP had enjoyed a symbiotic relationship with the press, more collaborative efforts were needed, especially as the world recently commemorated 16 days of advocacy against gender-based violence. She said that NAPTIP relies on the press for support and expressed gratitude for their contributions so far. Concluding the training, the Director General presented certificates to all the participants. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons recently introduced an online enlightenment and interactive forum tagged Conversations with NAPTIP. The maiden edition, which coincided with the Director General's 100 days in office, started with an address by the Director General, Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi. Delivering her speech, Dr. Waziri Azi highlighted some of the achievements of the agency. Other speakers include representative of the Chief of Mission, International Organization for Migration, Prestige Murima, Head of Programs Support Unit IOM, Imabong Senusi, Executive Director, Women Trafficking and Child Labor Eradication Foundation, Watcliffe, Abdul Ghani Abubakar, President, Network Against Child Trafficking, Abuse and Labor, Ajibola Abayomi, President, Journalist International Firm for Migration, G4. The program was highly interactive, as many people who joined the online conversation asked salient questions, which were duly answered by the Director General of NAPTIP. Conversations with NAPTIP is a monthly online interactive firm, broadcast on Zoom and all the social media platforms of NAPTIP, aimed at awareness creation. Victim's story segment is always very revealing. Don't go away. It's Nap Tip on the move. Um, I'm an orphan. My mom died August 2019. I have to leave the village to come to Abuja to look for work. They were trying to get me out of marriage 
then I was 14 years old. It was uh, my mom uncle that sent me to Abuja. So when I was staying with his brother in this Abuja, the brother wife start maltreating me. She don't allow me to eat in the dining table. She pursued me. So when he noticed that something is going on like that, so he had to warn her that she should stop treat, treating me like house girl, like the child. So she pursued me, she dropped me in the park. She said that I should look for my way back to the village. And I begged her, but still, she did not agree. So then I have to look for work. So I met a girl in the um, fish market. I just told her that I'm looking for a job, so she helped me. She said, that, okay, that she have uh, a woman, that she's a police woman. So the policeman said I will be working in a restaurant. I said okay, no problem. I worked with her like three months. So I have to leave her because then if she wants to pay me, she'll be complaining that there is shortage. And why there is no shortage? I went and looked for work in area one. I got work. I was working. I was working in a restaurant. So the woman has two brothers. So, but she don't, she don't used to stay in the area when she has another house. So I was living there with them. So the boy, he was asking me for a girlfriend. I told him that I don't want to. After one week, that is one month and a week. So the brother, the other brother, Kelechi went out. So, and that day I was inside sleeping. So he came inside the room. He raped me. I didn't tell the sister because I, if I tell her, she will push me from the work and I don't have any place to go. He raped me like four times. So I was pregnant. I told the sister. She came and tells me, she said that I was pregnant. So she took me to her doctor, then gave me injection and some other. I was feeling pain all over my body, my stomach. I didn't sleep that night, I was bleeding. I stayed there for some weeks. Then she started maltreating me. She said that I will not eat. She does not give me food to eat. And that my madam, that police woman in Nube. So when I went back there, because there is a woman close to her that connects me with this woman that I went and be working with in the area one. So I went to tell her that I want to leave the woman because she take the woman as her friend. But I didn't tell her what happened. Police station is close to her restaurant. The DPO saw me, I was passing, he called me. So he arrested me and put me inside cell for two days. So my mother and they were trying to call her that she should come. That DPO have catch one of her girl and put her inside. She should come and beg him to release me. So when she came, she said that that they should put myself inside, said that I'm not a woman being, that I run away with a hundred thousand. I told her I didn't carry any money and she know and she didn't pay me the work that I work with her. So she said that if I want to come out from the cell, that means I have to go back and start working with her. So I agreed, I come out from the cell. She said that because she paid me ten thousand, she said that she will not pay me ten thousand again. She will pay me five five thousand still I still agree so when she took me there I started working there I worked there like for almost a month so she starts saying that she wants me to start um, prostitution or be paying her the money so that was the day I and I called somebody tell that see 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 what is happening the boy now said okay he will give me some numbers to call so when I called, I told her, they said, that, okay, they will come and they will come and carry me. That was when Naptip came and rescued me. I've been in Naptip shelter for almost two years. And I want to thank Naptip for what they have done to me. Because if it's not because of them, now I could have started the prostitution work. And I want to thank, God, thank them for saving me for giving me a better place, for making me to 
to know that there is a better life for making me to hope that I can make it and um, for providing for us. For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking, violence against persons and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotline 0703-000203 or the short code 627 or email us info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at NAPTIP Nigeria or watch our videos on YouTube. Our time is up, but I must thank you for watching and urge you to keep a date with us next week. Don't forget to report all cases of violence against persons, human trafficking and child abuse. I'm Angela Agbegi. Goodbye.